Chicago, home to some of the tallest skyscrapers built in the 20th century. The Sears Tower, the Standard Oil Building, the John Hancock Center. Beneath the concrete and glass skin of these giants is a skeleton of steel, rugged beams forged at Chicago's U.S. Steel South Works plant on the shore of Lake Michigan. William F. Jandeska, Jr. was born and raised in Chicago's Avalon Park neighborhood, practically in the shadow of the U.S. Steel South Works plant, the place where his father spent his career, eventually becoming the head of the maintenance department. Young Bill attended Chicago Vocational High School, which incidentally boasts Football Hall of Famer Dick Butkus as an alumnus, where, among other activities, he played baseball and basketball and set his sights on a career in architecture. While working on the final print of an entry he was submitting to a citywide competition, he accidentally ripped the vellum. Fed up at having to start over again, he made up his mind to change career paths, settling on electronics instead. When it came to choosing a college major, he decided on metallurgy and opted to pursue his studies at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, in part due to its favorable in-state tuition rates. During the summers after high school and while at the university, he worked at the U.S. Steel plant, enjoying stints in various departments, from rolling mills to welding shop to maintenance tractors. After getting his B.S. in metallurgical engineering, he remained at Illinois, getting a master's on the topic of corrosion pitting of steel. Later, he earned his Ph.D. with a thesis on the effect of boron in austenite, research that was funded by Caterpillar Tractor, with whom he had a contract at their research center in Mossville, Illinois. After interviewing with three companies, including IBM and Union Carbide, Bill accepted a position with General Motors. He was assigned to the GM Technical Center in Warren, Michigan, a 710-acre campus designed by famed architect Aero Saarinen that has been designated a U.S. National Historic Landmark. He began by working on the design of alloys for the recovery unit on the gas turbine, a long-term experimental GM project that was never commercialized. Work on ceramic parts and rare earth cobalt magnets used in high output miniature motors followed, as well as on a process for orienting powders magnetically in an electric field to enhance motor output. The extremely harsh winter in the Midwest in 1977, coupled with an unfavorable interstate regulatory environment, led to a severe shortage of natural gas. GM's Delco Remy division in an effort to reduce its usage of natural gas, was looking for a way to lower the sintering temperature of the PM parts it was producing for its shock absorbers and other products. Enter Bill Jandeska. His idea of using a nickel boron additive was not only a successful solution to the sintering temperature problem, but it served as his entry into the powder metallurgy field, where he was to remain for the rest of his career. Using that boron additive alloy, or versions of it, became important for properties like wear and scuff resistance and carried him quite a way along his career path. Bill's fruitful association with MPIF began in 1984 when he attended the PM conference in Toronto to present a paper on toughness of ferrous PM structures. Right from the beginning of this relationship, he was ready to roll up his sleeves and get involved in the important work of both MPIF and APMI. He presented papers in technical sessions, conducted presentations at APMI chapter meetings, and eventually served as a co-chairman of the annual conference in 1989 and later the World Congress in 2002. In 1986, two years after his introduction to MPIF, he was appointed to serve on the organization's technical board. That same year, GM tapped him along with representatives from the engineering, purchasing, and legal groups to launch and lead the Powder Metallurgy Creativity Team, whose mission was to search out opportunities for powder metal within GM. The team was highly successful and remained viable well into the 2000s. After two decades at the Technical Center, Bill moved to GM Powertrain as manager for PM Technology 
where among his first projects was the launch of GM's first PM-forged connecting rod in the 1992 North Star V8 engine. A few years later, he actively promoted the use of PM main bearing caps at GM, along with others such as Young Kim, whose focus was in the area of transmissions. He continued to be a stalwart champion of PM within General Motors, pushing to get the chassis car and truck groups to begin using it too. And beyond General Motors, he worked tirelessly along with his counterparts at the other two member companies of Detroit's Big Three, Gene Lin at Chrysler and Rush Chernikov at Ford, to enlighten the domestic automotive supplier community about the benefits of PM. Bill became the chairman of the MPIF Technical Board in 1989 and served in this position until 2003. During this long tenure, the Tech Board's membership and level of participation expanded. New committees were established and existing ones redefined, and special interest programs were developed for the annual conferences. The Board created the Outstanding Technical Paper Award and initiated the Annual Technology Assessment Report many of which he personally presented at MPIF Fall Management Conferences. At the time of his appointment as Chairman of the Tech Board, he was also part of a small group that helped set up the Center for Powder Metallurgy Technology, CPMT, a nonprofit that had recently been created through the impetus of MPIF with the express mandate of marshalling the efforts of the corporate and academic worlds to advance the PM industry. Bill's decades-long service on behalf of powder metallurgy, both within the worldwide GM organization and in the automotive industry at large, earned him the respect and appreciation of his peers. He was the recipient of the MPIF Automotive Achievement Award in 1995 and accepted the 2002 Automotive Innovation Award on behalf of GM. He was awarded the MPIF Distinguished Service to Powder Metallurgy Award in 1999 and was inducted as a Fellow of APMI International in 2005. Other organizations have recognized his outstanding contributions as well, including ASM International, which inducted him as a Fellow in 1993, and SAE, which bestowed the McFarland Award on him the same year. Bill Jandeska retired from GM in 2006, but has remained active in the PM arena through his involvement with CPMT where he serves as program manager. He recently became a trustee of the OPC Senior Center, where he and his wife, Jean, live. The two, who are about to celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary, are both active outdoor people, playing bocce, enjoying golf, hiking, and riding their trail bikes. They do a good deal of traveling, both around Michigan and to many national parks with their small RV, as well as to places like Hawaii, Europe, Africa, and the Caribbean. Wherever possible, be it in California or in France, they indulge their passion for wine. And when they can, they like to partake of water activities such as kayaking, sailing, and snorkeling. The PM industry owes a debt of gratitude to Bill Jandeska for his many outstanding contributions and, on its behalf, MPIF is proud to honor him with this prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award.